Today we're going to learn to make a crochet dishcloth. This is a basic crochet stitch. What most people start with is a dishcloth, a pot holder. Um, I'm using a size H hook. And for kitchen items, you want to use a cotton yarn. Um, this is a dishy brand, but you can buy at any of the big box stores. You can buy other brands of cotton yarn. Um, you want to use cotton rather than acrylic so that they don't melt in the kitchen. Now the first thing you're going to start with, I'm going to make mine um, an 8x8. Eight eight. First thing you want to start with is a, is a slip stitch. So what I do is I just grab the thread, twist it, and then pull that loop through. Put my hook in there. And then pull it down a little bit to tighten it. The first stitch you're going to do is a chain. What you do is yarn over your hook so that that hook part of it grabs the yarn and you pull it through the loop. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Now here we have, so far, one, two, three, four chains. You want to do 32 chains because you're going to have 32 single crochet, which will be eight inches. But then you're also going to add one more chain for the turning chain. And since I'm talking, I can't uh, count and talk at the same time. So I'm just going to keep going a little bit. And then I'm going to count them. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, that's going to give you your 32 single crochet, plus one more chain, for the turning chain. Okay, now when you start the first row, this one is the turning chain, so you're going to go into the second chain from the hook, and you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, pull through two. That is a single crochet stitch. Insert, yarn over, pull through, Yarn over, pull through. Insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through two. This is the most basic stitch, the first one that people learn. And this is the easiest pattern to start with if you've never crocheted before. Insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And you keep doing that yarn over, pull through two. You just keep going and you will have 32 stitches at the end of the row. Now that you've finished round one, or row one, it's gonna be a little bit squiggly. That's all right, it will straighten out later on as you do more rows. But I just want to show you this is what your single crochet looks like. There's one stitch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Now you ended row one with this loop, one loop left over. Now to turn it, you're going to do yarn over, pull through, that's a chain one, and then you turn your work. And then, right here on the top, 
you can see you have two loops on the top of the stitch. You're going to go through those, yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two. This is going to give you row two. Insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. And you just continue. Insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through two. It's actually very calming, very relaxing. It is very frustrating at first until you learn because you feel like you're not doing anything right. It's not coming out right. It doesn't look like you want it to look. But as you practice, you'll get it. it takes a little bit of patience to learn. But it's such a wonderful hobby helps you focus on something other than your worries. It helps you make beautiful things for your home or beautiful gifts for your family and friends. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and you just keep going to the end. And there's your last stitch and your second row is complete and it's starting to straighten out a little bit it'll straighten out a little bit more with the weight of the stitches holding it in, in place yarn over pull through that's your chain one and you turn there are two rows now you'll see that this is the front side of the stitch this is the back side of the stitch where it looks like they're going in different directions. This, the front side, they're going together this way. The back side, they're going apart. Now, single crochet is not an exact square. So, let me show you. This one is the one I finished. This has 32 single crochet. You're not going to do 32 rows because it's not going to come out. As an exact square. If you want an exact square, this one is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 26, 28, 30, 32. This is 34 rows. And that gives you a square. Because they're just they're just a little bit different, the height and the width of the stitch. But you keep going in the same way with your single crochet. And you make 34 of these rows or however many rows you want it to be whether you want it to be a short little pot holder whether you want it to be longer to be a kitchen towel you can make it smaller as a scrubby this is a nice shape for a washcloth there's all kind of things you can do with this stitch once you learn it and then after you learn this stitch, you can graduate on to learn more complicated stitches that come out even prettier. But in my opinion, this one comes out really nice. Just keep repeating. And yes, it's going to be wrinkly and curly. But at the end, I'll also show you how to block it. Cotton yarn blocks very beautifully. And that will lay it flat. This is also going to be machine washable since it's cotton. Okay. Now there's three rows. Now just keep doing that until you have 34 rows or however many rows you would like in your pattern. Okay, now we have our, all of our rows. And see how it is kind of messy and it curls up, but we're going to block it. Now, I want to show you 
how to count the rows. There's a line here, and that symbolizes every two rows. The front and the back are different. They look differently. So that line there gives you two rows. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34 rows. Now, you can measure it with a, with a ruler, with a measuring tape to get, the way I do it in exact square is I just fold it in the corner. If it's pretty close, it's pretty close to a square. Now you can certainly finish off your pot holder right here. But you would need a hanging loop if you're going to hang it up. So all I do is chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, and I do six of those. And then go back into your stitch, yarn over, pull through. And that'll give you a little hanging loop. And you can add, instead of six, you can add eight if you want to make it longer. Then you would cut the yarn right there and weave it in. But if you're feeling a little bit more adventurous and would like to continue making a border to make the edges more clean, not it's not mandatory, but it does make it look nicer. Now, if you want to do that, you chain one, turn, and you keep going the way you did with a single crochet. And this is going to make a 35th row in it. But this row is going to go all the way around the edge. All four sides. To give you a nice finished piece. And you just keep going with single crochet. And then when you get to the end, you're not going to turn it. Not around backwards like you have been doing. You're going to turn it differently. Got a little knot right there. Keep going with your single crochet. And then you're going to make a corner because you're going to go down the side. Now, you're going to, in each one, you want to do a single crochet here, a single crochet in the side, and then one for the corner. So basically, you're going to do three single crochet in the same stitch and that turns the corner then you're going to single crochet all the way down the edge of this one you're going to go in the row ends you're not working in the single crochet like you were before you're working in the sides of them not hard to do at all you just put your hook through there's plenty of room and those little holes in the end, there's plenty of room to fit your hook and you just keep going the same way. A single crochet is insert the hook, yarn over, yarn over, pull through twice. Insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through twice. And you're going to do that. Just keep going and see how it makes it, the edges a nice pretty. It's a little bit curly, but we're going to block it. But see how it evens it out and gives it a nice edging. And you just keep going in every row end.
Okay, now you're at the last one. This is row one. And you want to make another corner, so you're going to do the same thing. Three single crochet in the same space. Now you have, when you made your beginning chain, you had a loop left over. You're going to single crochet in those. One stitch in each loop. Takes a little practice because you have a small loop to work with. But again, it's not hard at all. See, I missed one. That's why you need to practice. Keep going all the way and every every one of these unused loops this was row one and just a few more to go to you get the bottom finished And you can see the difference. This you're going to trim. But see what a nice edging that makes rather than the leftover loops. It just finishes it off more neatly. And then when, again, when you get to the last loop of, round, of row one, you're going to do the three for the corner. One single crochet, two single crochet, three single crochet. And that just gives you one side left to go. And you keep going with single crochet in the row ends. Keep going as you as you're almost there. Now, when you started it. You had one single crochet in that stitch. But to make your corner, you need three. So you're going to put two more in that corner. And then you're going to join with a slip stitch. So you insert your hook through the top of the stitch. You yarn over and you pull through. And that's your slip stitch. Then you're going to make your six or eight chain, however many you want. For your hanging loop and without twisting the hanging loop you're going to slip stitch again in the same spot then yarn over pull through and then you need to cut it now you're going to cut your yarn but you want to leave a few inches as a tail, then pull it through. Now you're going to go to the back side of your pot holder and you're going to thread that yarn through a yarn needle. And this is what's called weaving in the stitches. You're going to go through the stitches on the back of this pot holder. 
I'm gonna, they call it weaving in the ends. And you're gonna go through the back side of a few stitches, a couple inches, or at least an inch. Now, now you're gonna come back the other way. That's why it's weaving. Now this just makes it secure so that as you wash it, that end doesn't come out and the knot doesn't come out. Now I like to do three times. So go down this way, back, and then down this way again. I do it three times to make it really hard for that end to come out because my potholes get a lot of wear and a lot of washing. So your pot holder is done. Next step will be blocking it. Now to block it, very simple. You get a towel, cotton towel that's damp and lay it over the top and then use an iron. You hear that? You hear it steaming it? It's gonna heat up the water in the towel and it's going to steam it into shape. See? Oops. That one was curled up, so I'm going to just do that corner. See how pretty and neat it is? And then if you want, you can do the other side, the back side of it too. And just steam it. With your iron. And then you have a beautiful handmade pot holder for your kitchen or for a gift for someone.